Back in humankind's hunter-gatherer days, our ancestors faced the stress of catching or finding something to eat, and it seems that things haven't changed that much. We still worry about what to cook, and even booking a table at a restaurant or rushing out for fast food can set the pulse rate and blood pressure soaring. Yudhika Sijanani sees things very differently, and she believes that preparing a meal can and should be a pleasurable experience. So let's see how she does it. Happiness is the feeling you get when you know life is good. You can't help but smile. I find my happiness in the kitchen, preparing a meal for my kids after a long day. I just love watching their faces light up. And today I'm sharing some of my favorite dishes with you. On the menu, there's something for everyone. Rochelle's version of a surf and turf, which is a prawn stuffed chicken lollipop. For the main course, my favorite, coriander lamb balti knuckles. And then for dessert, Tanvi's favorite cake, a chocolatey chocolate cake. Let's get cooking. This is a really simple chocolate cake recipe, but don't underestimate it. It is a beaten bake cake, but it's chocolatey, it's moist, and it's quite luscious as well. Starting out with cake flour going into a mixing bowl. To this, add sugar, cocoa powder, 45 grams, baking powder and bicarb, a teaspoon and a half of each ingredient using a whisk to break down the lumps, especially in the cocoa powder. Make a well in the center. To this, pour in the milk. I'm using full cream milk for this recipe. Sunflower oil. Two eggs lightly beaten. And vanilla essence. Work the ingredients together with the whisk. I'm working in the center of the bowl and gradually pulling in the dry ingredients. You don't want this to get lumpy. Remember, you don't want to overwork the batter or you'll end up with quite a dense cake. The last ingredient, a half a cup of boiling water going into the batter. Gently work that in. It is quite a runny batter, so don't worry if it looks a bit thin. Promise it's gonna give you a delightful cake. And for this, I'm using a 20 centimeter grease and lime tin. It's got the baking paper at the bottom. Just pour the batter into the tin. This batter looks absolutely delicious. I could almost drink it with a straw. The cake goes into a preheated oven, 170 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes. The next dish is my favorite, the coriander lamb balti knuckles. I first tried this dish at a curry house in London. It was absolutely delicious, and I'm sure I seemed quite distracted during the meal. I was trying to make note of all the flavors so I could get back home and recreate it. The first ingredient we're going to need is some sunflower oil going into a heated pan. You need a generous glug of oil to get the onions fried. To this, a bay leaf and a cinnamon stick. To this, some finely chopped onion. Season the onion with some coarse salt, some curry leaves also going in. Fry the onion until they're golden brown in color. And while the onions are frying, let's start with our spice blend. For this, I've got my trusted mortar and pestle here. The spice is going in, coriander seeds, to this cumin seeds, cardamom pods, just two, and now dried red chilies. I've got about four here. Use the pestle. Start out by bruising the seeds. If you try to press down quite quickly, you're gonna find the coriander seeds jumping out the mortar. This isn't supposed to be a finely ground spice blend. You're supposed to have bits of coriander and they burst with flavor when you take a bite. It's quite a rustic dish as well. Let's check on those onions. Starting to go brown. The onions are beautiful, pale golden in color. Pour in the blended spice from the mortar. Take care not to burn the spice ginger and garlic paste going in. Ginger is an amazing tenderizing agent when cooking lamb. I'm adding some red chili powder. Stir that through for a few seconds. You don't want the chili powder to change color. In goes the lamb knuckles. When I tried this dish, it was made with boneless lamb. I prefer using lamb on the bone. I think the marrow is the best part, which is why I say it's one of my favorite dishes. I just love the marrow bones. Use a wooden spoon and keep scraping. Release the spices that are stuck. Next spice going in, garam masala. And next, a pinch of turmeric. And now add the tomatoes. Gently stir that through. 
And I want to cook this down until the oil separates from the tomato. The tomato develops in flavor, starts to roast in the pan with those spices, and that will give you the best flavor. Pour in some boiled water, just enough to almost cover the pieces of lamb. The last spice or herb, I should call it, is kasuri methi. This is an aromatic herb, and I prefer using this to using fenugreek seeds. Cover the pan with a tight-fitting lid and leave the lamb to simmer for about an hour to an hour 15 minutes over a medium heat. I'm going to get started on those chicken lollipops. These chicken lollies are really easy to make. I've got some chopped prawn meat in a mixing bowl. Season this with salt. I've got some freshly crushed garlic going into the mixing bowl. Spring onion, a touch of green chili, and coriander. This is the surf and turf version of the chicken lolly, but you can also use cheese and corn, chili cheese as well. I've got some chicken drumsticks here. I've taken off the skin. It's quite easy to make. You just slice around the bone and pull the meat back. And you have these little pockets of chicken that have formed. And I'm going to pop some of the prawn filling into the chicken and make sure you pull that all the way up. Secure the chicken with a toothpick. And that's what the chicken lolly should look like. I've got the filling in the chicken lollies. I've preheated a pan and I've greased it with nonstick spray. Pour in some sunflower oil. And while that's heating up, we're going to finish up on the lollies. Season these with salt. Some black pepper going on. I do think anything crumbed is hard to resist. So start out with the chicken lolly. Dunk it in some flour. Pop it into some egg. Next, into some crumbs. And then, into some oil. I'm going to use a spoon to turn this over. Remember, you don't want the oil to be too hot when you're frying this. The crumbs tend to burn, and the chicken and the stuffing can remain raw. This is deep golden and crispy. Looks perfect. Let's get it out the oil. We're going to have that delicate corn meat in the center, crispy crumbs on the outside. Adds a lovely texture as well. You could serve this with a spiced mayo or a chutney of your choice. That's the last one. Let's finish up on the chocolate cake. I've made some chocolate cream cheese frosting for this cake and I've got it in a piping bag here with a plain nozzle and piping little blobs of this cream cheese frosting around the sides. You don't need to be a professional to create the perfect finishes on this cake. You just need to be quite strategic and plan carefully. To make the cream cheese frosting, I've creamed butter with icing sugar until it's super light and fluffy. Added some cream cheese and cocoa powder as well. I've added a touch of vanilla to that. That looks decadent. We've got some cocoa powder here in a fine sieve. Just dust that over. The favorite chocolate in our home is hazelnut. And I always say to eat this chocolate, you unwrap it, turn it over, locate the pieces that have the most nuts and leave the pieces without any nuts. Just ragged pieces of chocolate pressed into the cake. Now for the strawberries. Create a little constellation of strawberries on the side of the cake. There we go touch of cocoa powder going over just to dust that and that's our chocolate cake done let's plate up our meal if you had to ask me what does happiness look like this would be it we've got those chicken lollipops stuffed with prawn for the main course coriander lamb balti knuckles and for dessert chocolatey chocolate cake it's topped with hazelnut chocolate and strawberries and it's picture perfect as well it's sometimes the simplest things that can create the greatest happiness in a home i encourage you to do those things and create great happiness in yours